Before the video starts, do you think getting glad is hard? With skill capped, it might be easier than you expect. Last season, we took three random rival players and taught them the same lessons we teach on our website. And within five weeks, they all achieved Gladiator for the first time. They weren't alone, and many of our users were able to get the rating they've always wanted by simply using our website. We're so confident in your results that we offer a money back guarantee if you don't see rating gains while actively using our videos. And with over 600 to choose from, there is something for everyone. So if you want to get the rating you've always wanted, check out skillcap.com slash wow today. Now, back to the video. It's that time of the season again where some of you might be itching to get Gladiator. And if you're like me, you enjoy a relaxing experience, like walking on the beach with your girlfriend. But if we were being honest, who really has time for that? When instead, you should be capping your vault every week. <sighs> anyway, today we have a few suggestions to make your life easier as we break down the easiest classes for Gladiator in 9.2. So sit back as we show you what you need to be playing for a relaxing experience in Shadowlands Season 3. Let's kick things off with our easiest melee and two suggestions to put you on the turbo path to Gladiator. First up is Fury Warrior. This might come as a bit of a surprise since they really weren't represented at all last season, but after the nerfs to defensive stance in 9.2, many warriors made the jump over to Fury, which is proving to be an execution test for many healers in Season 3. One of the biggest reasons why Fury is so simple is that it doesn't even have defensive stance to manage and instead has 10% damage reduction built in passively with the war paint talent. This is on top of relatively streamlined DPS rotation with Bloodthirst and Raging Blow, representing the majority of your damaged globals. The only real DPS maintenance is having enough uptime and rage generation to constantly use Rampage in order to stack the Slaughterhouse healing reduction debuff. This encourages Fury Warriors to attack a single target, without needing much in the realm of cross CC, with the exception of having an unavoidable Storm Bolt to lock down kill targets or healers when needed. All of this unitasking makes Fury Warrior an excellent pick for Season 3 Gladiator, especially with Turbo Cleave, which continues to be a massive execution test due to its passive durability. Being able to fall back on tons of utility, Turbo often lands on attrition-based win conditions where enemy healers are simply unable to keep up with its raw pressure, even without any CC. The role of a Fury Warrior in this comp is pretty straightforward. Maintain Slaughterhouse on the kill target and CC with Stormbolt when needed. Obviously, there are more complexities at higher levels, but your partners will be doing the majority of the heavy lifting in this setup. Next up for our easy gladiator melee are Demon Hunters. We've talked about this in the past, but DH has a lot of features that make dealing damage really easy. For one, simply having some of the best mobility out of any melee DPS makes it pretty seamless to keep up damage. And this is on top of a pretty simple damage rotation without much global maintenance outside of Chaos Strike, Blade Dance, and I-Beam. Their control toolkit is centered around three instant cast abilities, two of which can be used from range, with Fell Eruption and Imprison both being usable on target gets far away, Demon Hunters can't really fail their CC unless they completely lose track of diminishing returns. Defensively, Demon Hunters can be a bit tricky since they lack the defensive tools needed to survive huge stun setups on their own, but that is offset by the fact that they have some of the most straightforward team-wide utility, with Reverse Magic being a clutch defensive save in key matchups and Darkness being hard to mess up given that it's an AoE effect, meaning it can benefit multiple party members at once regardless of who is being attacked. As far as comp options are concerned, Demon Hunters are quite flexible, but might find it easiest to play with a Death Knight who are seeing a noticeable jump in strength this season. This comp doesn't require much precise setup, and Abomination Limb makes it much easier to land Triple Chaos Nova setups that can be chained into unhealable AoE damage. All in all, without needing much coordination, this comp is well suited for an easy Gladiator push. Moving on from melee, we have two range DPS specs for an easy mode glad, and one of them might surprise you, but first, one that shouldn't come as any surprise, Beast Mastery Hunter. Look, we know by now that BM has been the punchline of many PvP memes over the years, starting from the boomer joke in vanilla that every weapon is a hunter weapon, and even the jokes of Mist of Pandaria Season 12, where Stampede was an auto win button if the hunter was able to find it on their bars. This lore has continued for over a decade now into Shadowlands Season 3 where BM Hunters have repeatedly solidified themselves as the easiest ranged DPS. Their rotation is relatively straightforward. Use Cobra Shot and Barb Shot with the right side of your brain, and then devote the left side to pressing Bestial Wrath and Kill Shot whenever it lights up on your bars. We're not joking, this is all it takes. On the defensive side of things, Craven's Stratagem has made the Hunter class simply immortal to an entire archetype of comps, 
practically eliminating them as a kill target for any team that utilizes damage over time. The majority of the hunter's skill cap comes from using Roar of Sacrifice effectively, but with a 1 minute cooldown, it can become a really scripted cooldown trade. Its primary function is to counter massive offensive cooldowns like Combustion and Avenging Wrath, both of which have baseline CDs longer than Roar of Sacrifice. This means monitoring weak auras and simply trading Ross into the kill target, which is the correct play in the vast majority of situations on the climb to Gladiator. If you're a regular viewer of this channel, you already know the best BM Hunter comp. If not, it involves finding a Feral Druid that has Feral Frenzy bound, and a Priest that can press Power Word Shield after summoning some fairies. If it wasn't obvious by now, Jungle Cleave is definitely your easiest setup, having some of the highest sustained pressure in the game while simultaneously being incredibly durable on defense. As promised, we said we might surprise you with our next pick for Easy Glad, and it's Frost Mage. This might seem like a bit of a contradiction given that in the past, we said that Frost Mage was mediocre at best and isn't really designed for easy play. But Shadowlands Season 3 is proving to be a wild ride of adventure, as Frost Mages are absolutely crushing, thanks to a few key playstyle changes and one incredibly powerful comp. On the playstyle side of things, Necrolords become the obvious choice for any Frost Mage, due primarily to the strength of Deathborn with its unbelievably long duration thanks to increased conduit item levels on Gift of the Lich. When you combine this with an undispellable Icy Veins, which can have double its duration thanks to Thermal Void, the Frost Mage damage window lasts nearly a minute long. Yes, that's right, Frost Mage offensive cooldowns have nearly one minute of uptime, meaning it is extremely hard to mess up, especially now since many Frost Mages are playing with Echoing Resolve as their default trinket, giving them multiple interrupt immunities throughout the entire game. As far as playstyle is concerned, Frost Mages are pretty straightforward, just deal damage. Even at the highest levels, Frost Mages are prioritizing Frost Bolt casts over Polymorph, since their 1 minute damage window is so threatening when combined with the Slick Ice Legendary. This wizard oriented playstyle is only elevated by the fact that Destruction Warlocks are their best DPS partner by far, and with a Holy Priest in the healing role, this comp is scary. With so much control and raw cast to damage throughout, MLP feels more like a PvE encounter than an actual arena game. Finally, let's round out our list of easy specs for Gladiator by looking at healers. It should come as no surprise that Holy Priest takes our first spot in this section, due in part to how well-rounded their toolkit is in the Shadowlands Season 3 meta. The primary strength of Holy Priest is tied to a single ability, with Holy Ward Serenity being a disproportionately strong instant heal, with two resettable charges and a variable cooldown. Healing in Shadowlands has become an arms race of burst damage and burst healing, with Holy Priests having the best toolkit to prevent their team from instantly dying thanks to Serenity combined with two defensive cooldowns that are nearly failsafe. With the introduction of tier sets, Holy Priest healing got disproportionately better compared to other healers, having even more cooldown reduction on Serenity, making it accessible more often throughout the game as a response to heavy burst damage. And if that wasn't enough, Holy Priests continue to be one of the most slippery healers, with Greater Fade, Holy Ward, and Divine Ascension making them difficult to CC and kill. Unless you have been living under a rock for the past decade, you already know that RMP is above and beyond their best comp in Shadowlands, and arguably the best comp of all time. Holy Priests make 3-2-1 CC setups even easier for their team with Chastise, and win conditions are made even stronger thanks to mind games, which can secure kills in ways that other healers can't even begin to compete with. That brings us to the final easy spec on our list, Holy Paladin. This might seem like a bit of a wild card, but hear us out. Outside of Holy Priest, healers in general have it a bit rough in Shadowlands. One thing remains consistent, you need ways to deal with huge burst damage. If you don't have a button that can instantly save your team, you're gonna have a bad time. Luckily, Holy Paladins have three buttons to prevent instant losses for their team, with Sacrifice, Bop, and Saved by the Light all acting as safety nets for dire situations. In 9.2, Holy Paladins have started to move away from Kyrian in favor of Necrolord, which gives them more instant cast burst healing thanks to the combination of its Covenant ability combined with tier set bonuses. Although not as strong or easy as Holy Priest, Paladins seem to be moving ahead in the arms race against high burst damage. For an easy queuing experience, Holy Paladins have two fairly decent options, with Mage Lock or Turbo Cleave being their easiest picks. These comps are tanky enough on their own, with Turbo requiring slightly more contributions to kills. And before we wrap things up, we wanted to remind you of another option for hitting Gladiator in Season 3, and it is visiting SkillCap.com. Once again, we helped thousands of players just like you last season, and some of our users saw Gladiator ratings for the first time. Even if you think Gladiator is out of reach, we still offer a money-back guarantee if you don't see rating gains while actively using our website. So if you really want the best and easiest learning experience for PvP this season, be sure to check out SkillCap.com wow today.
All right, guys, that wraps up this video. We hope you found it useful and the best of luck in your weekly vaults. As always, though, thanks for watching. See you soon.